Okay, this is the grade 11, November 2018, question 9, which is on redox reactions. It says to the reaction between permanganate ions NMO4- and hydrogen sulfide H2S is given below. So here's your reaction here. We'll look at it a bit later. It says define reduction in terms of oxidation numbers. And now this is where it comes from, the name reduction. Because remember, uh, reduction is gain of electrons. But reduction is a decrease. Remember, to reduce is to get smaller. It is a decrease in oxidation number. Now it says... Write down, determine the oxidation number of manganese in the permanganate ion. So here we have MnO4 minus, it's a polyatomic ion. So according to the rules of oxidation numbers, the oxidation number for the whole thing is going to be negative 1. So this negative 1, well, I got this from the charge on the ion, yes? So the charge on the ion gives you the oxidation number for the polyatomic ion. So this negative 1 is going to be equal to the oxidation number on manganese plus 4 times the oxidation, of, oxidation number of oxygen, which is negative 2. So negative 1 is going to be the oxidation number of manganese minus 8, because 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So the manganese's oxidation number is plus 7. So the oxidation number is plus 7. Now it says... Write down the formula of the substance that undergoes oxidation. So if you want to check what has undergone oxidation, you have to check everybody's oxidation number. So on this side, the manganese is plus 7. And on this side, the manganese is plus 2 because that is the charge on the iron on this side. On this side, the sulfur's oxidation number is 0 because it's an element. But on this side... The sulfur's number is, this is, plus 1, plus 1, because there are two hydrogens, which means the sulfur must be negative 2. Okay, I'm not interested in the water and the proton and these oxygens here, because in all of these, the oxidation number of the hydrogen and the oxygen didn't change. It's quite rare to have to use the oxidation numbers of the hydrogen and oxygen. It's usually the other things in the equation. So if we have a look here, on the hydrogen sulfide, okay, the hydrogen sulfides, the sulfur here is negative 2, and the sulfur on the other side is an element. So this one, negative 2 to 0, this is an increase, which means the sulfur in the hydrogen sulfide has increased this number, so it has undergone oxidation. So this one is hydrogen sulfide, or more specifically, the sulfur in the hydrogen sulfide has undergone oxidation, but it says write down the formula of the substance, so it's hydrogen sulfide. Now it says explain the answer to question 9.3 in terms of oxidation numbers. So the sulfur in H2S has an oxidation number. Where's my pen gone? What happened to my pen? An oxidation number of plus 2 and the oxidation number of sulfur is 0. Therefore, you have an increase in oxidation number. Please write the whole word increase. Don't be drawing arrows like me. Okay. So the oxidation number of sulfur increased, therefore it underwent oxidation from... Did I write plus 2 over here? The horror. This is negative 2. It's not positive 2. It went from oxidation number of negative 2 to 0. Sorry, increase in oxidation number. We went from being more negative to more positive. Even though 0 is not positive, the oxidation number has increased. Okay, now it says write down the formula of the oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agent is itself reduced. So what thing in this equation had its oxidation number get smaller? That was the permanganate ion MnO4 minus. Okay, now it says write down the oxidation half reaction. So this is quite a tricky one. It's not obvious like a copper thing. So we're going to use our table of 
reduction potentials to find the oxidation half reaction. So if we open our table over here, okay, we know, if we just check here quickly again, we know that the thing with the permanganate iron underwent reduction, okay? So we are looking for something with hydrogen sulfide and sulfur in the table. And it's going to be the oxidation reaction, hydrogen sulfide goes to sulfur. So if we come to the table here, we need to find hydrogen sulfide, but we need to find hydrogen sulfide on this side, okay? Because this reaction in this direction is the oxidation reaction. Goodness, look at this pen. Let us write this with the other pen. So this reaction in that direction is oxidation. That's why we need the hydrogen sulfide to be on the right-hand side. So it is an oxidation reaction. And here is the reaction over here. Okay. So the oxidation reaction is hydrogen sulfide goes to sulfur plus two protons plus two electrons. Make sure you remember the charges on everything. Make sure you remember to write this with a single arrow. When it is a half reaction, it needs to be written with a single arrow. So it is hydrogen sulfide, single arrow, sulfur, plus two protons. Make sure you put the charge, plus two electrons. Show that the electron is negatively charged. Now it says, use the ion electron method and write down the balanced net ionic equation. So we just want ions and we're going to get rid of anything that appears on both sides of the equation. Remember, we need one reduction reaction and one oxidation reaction because they can't occur without each other. We have already got the oxidation reaction. It's this hydrogen sulfide one, okay? This is the reaction. And now we need a reduction reaction that involves the permanganate iron and the Mn2 plus manganese 2 plus ion. So if we come back over here, where is the permanganate ion going to Mn2 plus? It is this reaction over here. And because we were looking for a reduction reaction, it is indeed the forward reaction. Okay. So we're going to take this reaction and we're going to go write it back with our oxidation reaction. So this reaction is the permanganate ion. Okay, let me move this backwards or we're going to run out of space. Let me just rub this out. Here is the permanganate ion MnO4 minus plus eight protons plus five electrons goes to the manganese two plus ion plus water, how many water, four water. Okay, that looks like the whole equation. Let's just check it on the other side here. If you should have your table with you and you can write it out from your table by yourself, because if you're doing these without your table, that's a bit blonde of you. Okay, now the problem arises. It says we have to balance this equation. And when we want to balance it for the net ionic equation, the thing we are most interested in are these electrons. These electrons are not equal on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, so we have to find the lowest common denominator. So we've got 2 and 5. The easiest way is to multiply this whole equation by 5 and this whole equation by 2, and we will end up with 10 electrons on each side. So this becomes 5 hydrogen sulfide, 5 sulfur, and 10 protons and 10 electrons. This one becomes two permanganate ions, 16 protons, 10 electrons, two manganese two plus, and eight water. So once we've got all of those guys, we now have to add everything together. Everything that is on both sides, like the electrons, we are going to ignore. Because 10 electrons on the left-hand side, 10 electrons on the right-hand side, it's not giving me the net. The net only involves um, what is on one side. So we take the first thing we've got. We've got 5 hydrogen sulfide. We've got 2 permanganate ions. 
Okay, now we have to have a look here. On this side, we have 16 protons, and on that side, we have 10 protons. So the net of 16 protons on the left and 10 on the right leaves me with 6 on this side. Then on this side of the right hand side of the on the product side, I've got five sulfurs, two manganese, two pluses, and eight water. And now my equation is balanced. You have to always check the electrons and balance the electrons by multiplying the whole equation by some factor. And you will then have your final answer.